Hello and welcome. I'm Ijoma Onyato. Tonight, Commonwealth leaders agree to have Prince Charles as next head of the group, resolved to strengthen democracy and counter violent extremism in member countries. Victims of arson on Nakka community in Benue state, allegedly carried out by soldiers, demand joint civil military investigative panel to probe incident as state government pleads for calm. Nigerian army to launch Operation Last Hold in the northeast next month, aimed at total restoration of peace in the troubled region. And head of service of the Federation defends suspension of six NEMA officials over alleged violation of public trust, says decision followed due process. Business news tonight. Africa Department of International Monetary Fund asks Nigeria to strike a balance between fiscal policy and debt sustainability. And in sports news tonight, Premier League's longest serving manager Arsene Wenger to step down from his role as Arsenal manager at the end of the season. And from Abuja, World Health Organization seeks increased funding by Nigeria for routine immunization to reduce the nation's infant and child mortality rates. We begin tonight from the United Kingdom, where the Commonwealth heads of government today ended their meeting with leaders adopting a six-point connectivity agenda to boost trade and investment among the Commonwealth countries. The leaders have their eyes fixed on increasing intra-Commonwealth trade to $2 trillion by 2030, including a strong stance against cyber crimes. This formed part of the 54-point communique released after the leaders went into a retreat at Windsor Castle. The leaders also agreed for the Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, to take over from the Queen as the next head of the group. Our correspondent Ibrahim Adra reports. For President Mohammed Buhari and other Commonwealth leaders, it's a long walk to the Windsor Castle. Their mission to the 950-year-old residents and fortress is to recap on events of the past week and take a position. <coughs> They sat down and deliberated for hours, at the end of which they articulated and made available a 54-point communique. Some of the commitments made border on trade, youth employment, good governance, health, education and cybersecurity. As part of the strong stance of the Commonwealth against cybercrime, the UK government is pledging up to £15 million to help member countries strengthen cybersecurity capabilities. Together we will explore a number of mutually supportive joint initiatives to aid international trade, innovation and sustainability. There was great concern amongst leaders about what they term trade protectionism, to which they would prefer free, transparent and open rules trading systems. Our particular concern was the continuing relevance of the Commonwealth. The continuing relevance of the Commonwealth to the extent that it would address the aspirations of the young people of the Commonwealth. They constitute some 60% of the population of the Commonwealth. They agreed to build skills, entrepreneurship and apprenticeship as a way of encouraging and creating meaningful employment for the youth population. Prime Minister May also made an announcement on who the future leader of the Commonwealth would be. Today we have agreed that the next head of the Commonwealth shall be His Royal Highness Prince Charles, the Prince of Wales. His Royal Highness has been a proud supporter of the Commonwealth for more than four decades. Before Friday's leaders' retreat and the final briefing, President Muhammad Buhari and his wife Aisha were guests of the Queen Elizabeth II during a special dinner for the visiting leaders. Chogam 2018 is reputed to have recorded a large turnout of leaders, 18 of them from the African continent. This event, like others before it, is not short in terms of themes and commitment. Perhaps that the organizers this time around are emphatic that there would be concrete actions that will impact on the people of member countries, especially the 60% youth population of the Commonwealth. From London, Ibrahim Adra, Channels Television News. And back here in Nigeria, violent extremism and attacks resulting in deaths remain a major concern. 
Some of the latest victims are residents of Naka community in Benue State who are asking for a joint civil military investigative panel to look into Thursday's arson attack on their community by men suspected to be soldiers. The residents made the request when the deputy governor of Benue State, Benson Abono, paid a fact-finding visit to the affected areas against the backdrop of reports of two deaths from the attack. This is Naka, the headquarters of Gwe West Local Council area of Benue State, where several houses were burnt on Thursday by men suspected to be officers of the Nigerian army. The attackers allegedly launched a reprisal on the community in protest against the murder of a soldier by the youth of the community. And this is what is left of their homes after the attack, which claimed two lives. Others managed to escape from the rage of the attackers. Light smoke still seeped through what is left of the buildings. A special team of security operatives in the state and government officials led by the state's deputy governor arrives for an on-the-spot assessment of the level of damage done. They also want to hear from the residents who obviously still live in fear. One of the victims whose house was burnt along with his farm produce tells his story. This house is my house. When I came back, I saw everything in flames. And everything that was inside, we didn't remove anything. And the experience was very, very bitter one. Who did this? I can't precisely say, but it is alleged that the military from 72 Battalion did that. The town hall meeting is attended by everyone concerned in the community. They all have something to say about the incident. But then the traditional ruler of Naka chose to speak on efforts made to prevent the alleged military action, as he calls for a joint investigation. We still call that Naka was ablaze, set ablaze by members of his uh, unit. He told us that he did not offer order anybody to destroy Naka, even though he is under intense pressure from the headquarters in Abuja. I must let you know that we have seen the wreckages Household belongings, food stuff, shops, motorcycles and cars, and even human casualties have been recorded. The compilation of destroyed properties and loss of lives is ongoing, and a compendium will be presented to you in due course. The community is gradually coming back to life, but then the people are obviously worried about another reprisal, as the state deputy governor pledges to set up an investigative panel to verify the accusations and denial. I'm made to understand that the commanding officer has set up an investigation panel. And the state government has also set up an investigation panel. We cannot afford to harm the soldiers that have been brought here to take care of us. We must be friendly with them. In the same manner, we cannot afford to have civilians dealt with by the army. And so we need to get to the root of the matter. How the officer was killed, what happened that led to his death, and so on and so forth. The idea is to ensure that peace reigns in our land. Although army authorities have confirmed the killing of a soldier on Wednesday, they however deny the involvement of soldiers in the attack. The assurance from the state governor is what residents of Naka community hold on to, as they expect to pick up the pieces of what is now left of their belongings. And two attacks elsewhere. No fewer than four persons, all males, have been reportedly murdered by suspected herdsmen in Miango district of Basa, local government area of Plateau State. The victims were reportedly ambushed along a river in the village where they were scooping sand into a truck when the attackers opened fire. They took to their heels after the gunshots attracted people from the village. A foreboding drive to a hapless community in Plateau State, where alleged herdsmen shot and killed four lay workers in Miango. The beauty of the arid scenery is unsettled by corpses of the victims laid in the foreground. The account of the boss of the workers coincides with the arrival of a lorry to convey the deceased to the morgue. 
then my boys just called me around some few minutes after 12 that this is what happened around and Warogo site and of which I ought to come back immediately and with immediate faith I just come down here of which I saw about four of my people just showed their, uh, their dates, completely dates. Information that I had, they were just gathering sound from nowhere, just some uh, some people come with guns, just shooting down, uh, shooting them. There is a committee set up by the by the honourable chairperson, Pastor Local Government, in person of Sarah Bali. And they were held a meeting today about the peace. And, and For the local government authorities, peace building efforts that were one step forward are now two steps back. They have been working very hard. And that is why for almost one month we did not have any attack in Idigola. But it is a pity another one happened. For as long as death occurs from conflict, the situation remains volatile in the face of continued attempts by government to keep peace on the plateau. And in a bid to put a stop to insurgency in the northeast, the Nigerian army has announced plans to launch Operation Last Hold with effect from May the 1st. The chief of training and operations of the army, Major General David Amadu, explains that the operation, which will last for four months, is aimed at total restoration of peace in the region. General Amadu adds that the operation will form part of activities marking the 2018 edition of the Nigerian Army Day celebration. The complex and adaptive nature of the Boko Haram insurgency has resulted in the dissident group still sometimes being engaged in abductions, attack on soft targets, improvised explosive device attacks, and suicide bombings. It has become expedient for the Nigerian army to change operating tactics, techniques, and procedure in the Northeast region. Accordingly, the Nigerian Army Day celebration, NATSEL for short, 2018, will be commemorated with the conduct of an operation tagged Operation Last Hold in Northern Borno within the Northeast Theater. The design is to deploy personnel and equipment to showcase the combat efficiency of the Nigerian Army and thereafter conduct operations to totally destroy Boko Haram locations in the Lake Chad Basin. Operation Last Hold is expected to last for four months and it will entail deployment of six additional maneuver brigades and other critical assets in Borno State. The operation is intended to facilitate the clearance of the Lake Chad waterways of seaweeds and other obstacles obstructing the movement of boats and people across the water channels. In the meantime, troops of three battalion on Operation Lafiadole have repelled an attack by Boko Haram terrorists at Gambaru Ngala town in Borono State. One of the terrorists was neutralized during the encounter, while other members of the group fled following superior firepower from the troops. Sadly, a soldier was killed in the attack. A statement from the Director of Army Public Relations, Brigadier General Texas Chuku, says items recovered from the insurgents include a rocket-propelled grenade, one anti-aircraft gun, and two rifles. In part two, after the break, former National Publicity Secretary of the PDP, Ulisa Metu, challenges courts to set up an independent medical panel to investigate his health status. That's in a moment. Please stay with us. <laughs> 